Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video and welcome to the new year. I am kicking off 2019 with a series of videos that are catered to people who are looking for easy, simple, and delicious vegan recipes. Maybe you just wanna eat a little healthier in the new year, maybe you wanna eat more plants, or maybe you went vegan entirely, but either way, I wanted to film a few of my basic recipes and sort of give you guys some basic kitchen skills and fundamentals. Because I think when you're adopting a new diet or just trying to eat a little differently, sometimes it can get really overwhelming and you don't really know where to start. So with this series, I hope to come out with some easy recipes that will inspire you and motivate you to get in the kitchen and have fun and make some of your own recipes as well. So today, if you can guess from the somewhat ingredients before me, you can't actually see most of them, but we are going to be making some vegan banana bread. Banana bread was actually one of the first recipes that I ever made um, when I went vegan. I would go through loaves of banana bread in college and I love this recipe because it's relatively inexpensive so it's great on a lower budget and it's also super yummy and satisfying. It'd be great for a breakfast, for a snack, and honestly, even sometimes I have it for dessert. I'll just like put some extra peanut butter, maybe some chocolate on there. All in all, it is really yummy and satisfying. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to make today. As always, the full recipe will be linked in the description of this video. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead. And if you're new to my channel and like what you see here, feel free to subscribe right down there. I post one to two videos every single week revolving around vegan recipes, my life, easy to follow, vegan stuff, things like that. But let's get on to the bread. So we're actually gonna set this loaf pan aside for now. We're not gonna need that till much, much later. But to start out, we're actually going to work on our flax egg. So if you're unfamiliar, vegans don't eat eggs, um, but there are a lot of different substitutes in baking that you can use to make a flax egg, but we're just going to be using a ground flax seed. You can also use ground chia seed if you want, but you want it to be ground. You don't want the whole seeds, because then you get chunks of chia seeds in your bread and it's kind of gross. But we're going to be using two tablespoons of ground flax seed with five tablespoons of water. So I've already measured out my five tablespoons of water and I'm just going to add my two tablespoons of flax into it and then whisk this together. And one flax egg is one tablespoon of ground flax with, I like to do about two and a half tablespoons of water. Some people do three, but I find that gets a little bit runny and doesn't really thicken up as much as I would like. So once this is evenly whisked, we're just going to set this aside and let it thicken. It'll get super gelatinous, I'll show you later. And then we're going to move on to the flour. So I make this banana bread just using oat flour. Um, we're using rolled oats here. We're going to actually save some of them later to add into the bread to give an extra texture element. But it's really easy to make your own oat flour. You can buy it from the store, but I think it's cheaper just to buy oats, especially if you buy them in bulk, and just use any old blender. I'm using my Vitamix, which is a nicer blender, but you don't have to have a nice blender at all. You can even do this in a bullet style blender. So we're going to be adding two cups of our rolled oats into the blender. And then we're just going to blend this. And I do wanna say one of the common mistakes that I see when people make their own oat flour is that they don't blend the oats finely enough. You want to blend it until it is fine, like almost all purpose flour fine. I see some people blend it where it's still slightly chunky and you may have to shake your bowl blender around a little or scrape down the sides, but you really want that fine flour. Otherwise your bread is going to be a lot more dense. pretty high power blender that only took like 30 seconds or so but if you have a blender that isn't as powerful you may need to do it for like upwards of a minute so now we're going to add our oat flour to this larger bowl and then we're going to add the rest of our dry ingredients and then whisk everything together so we have some baking powder we also have some baking soda we're going to be adding apple cider vinegar to the wet ingredients and the baking soda reacts with the apple cider vinegar to make things more fluffy and then we're also going to add some salt. And if you wanna add cinnamon to your banana bread, you totally can. I decided to leave it out for this recipe, but you know, I think it would be delicious with cinnamon too. So now we're going to set this aside and we're going to move on to our wet ingredients. So for the base of our banana bread, we're obviously going to need some bananas. And when you make banana bread, you want your bananas to be as brown as possible. I bought these a week ago and it's colder here so they're not ripening as fast so I'm just going to use these bananas. As you can see, they're pretty brown and spotty. But honestly, you could do this with a banana that's like almost black or like pretty much black. If it's completely brown, that's awesome. That just means that the sugars are breaking down more in the banana so it's going to be even sweeter. So then that way we don't have to add too much extra sugar to our banana bread in order to have it be sweet and delicious. So you're going to need three bananas for this recipe. I just like to peel my bananas and then break them off 
into chunks like this. And I will say I would recommend using fresh bananas for this recipe just because I have tried it with frozen and the bananas don't work as well. They release like a lot more um, liquid. So just use fresh bananas. You can buy them a week or two in advance, maybe two, especially in the winter, it's not ripening as fast. You can also put them in a brown paper bag or plastic bag and put them in like the warmest, sunniest location in your house. And then they'll ripen even faster. I'm actually gonna move this out of the way too. So then we are going to mash our bananas. And I actually do prefer to use a fork for this. You're just gonna get in there and mash your bananas up until you get a nice mushy consistency. Sometimes you gotta use a little elbow grease. If it's good, you're getting like a good shoulder workout. You can switch arms so you're not lopsided. I actually wonder if I have an uneven baking side from mixing stuff. So now the bananas are pretty mushy here, uh, but what I like to do afterwards is actually mix it to sort of whip the bananas, and I find that this breaks it down more, and you'll still get banana chunks through the bread, but it almost makes them more liquidy, so it's easier for, I guess it's to incorporate with the other wet ingredients. So speaking of the remainder of the wet ingredients, we are going to add some peanut butter. Um, if you guys are new to my blog, I don't like to cook with oil in my recipes, but that doesn't mean I don't like fat. So we're just going to be using peanut butter in place of oil. You can actually use any nut butter you want. I originally made this recipe with almond butter, um, which I think is delicious. I like almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter, and if you have a nut allergy, you could also use tahini or something like that. You can also use sunflower butter. Just be careful that it's not a bad thing. But sunflower butter does turn baked goes green, so don't freak out. And then we have our flax egg, and as you guys can see, it's way thicker now. We're going to add in some apple cider vinegar. Like I said, that's gonna react with the baking soda, as well as some vanilla extract, which also helps to make things taste a little bit more sweet. And then last but not least, we're going to add some coconut sugar. I don't like to use refined sugars in my recipes, like white sugar. Um, and coconut sugar still has some of the minerals and nutrients in it. Um, as from the coconut, I guess. So I like to use this. It tastes like brown sugar though, so if you don't have access to coconut sugar, you can use brown sugar too. We're going to add this in with our wet ingredients and mix it together um, so it dissolves before we add it to the dry ingredients. And this will help our bread have a better consistency. So now we have our dry goods, we got our wet goods, and we're just going to pour these into the center. So now, like I said, we're just going to mix until it gets well incorporated and this mixture itself is going to be kind of thick but that is okay you just got to trust it but we don't want to add any extra liquid to make it take even longer so after we have our stuff pretty well mixed we're going to fold in the remaining half cup of oats and i just like to do this because it adds a nice texture to the bread um but if you don't want the oats in you could leave them out if you'd like they do help absorb some of the liquid though so i would replace the half cup of oats with, I don't know, maybe like a fourth cup of flour. All right, we got our mix. It smells really good. I'm really happy about the fact that I decided to use peanut butter, because I mean, there's still a little stuff on the bottom, so I'm just gonna. Okay, so now we're just going to plop this into our loaf pan. I like to use an eight inch loaf pan. You can use a nine inch loaf pan if you want, but the bread is going to be flatter. I just think the eight inch loaf pan allows the center to be cooked completely, but it's also more compact, so it allows the bread to get a little bit more rise, if you will. So we're just gonna plop this bread in, and I like to line my loaf pan with parchment paper again, um, so I'm not using oil. You could also buy a silicone loaf tin if you didn't wanna use oil, or you can just grease it a bit. I mean, realistically, it's not that much oil. It's not gonna kill you but you do you. So now I'm just gonna spread my batter out and then we're gonna pop this banana bread in the oven. You know what, actually, I think I'm gonna be fancy because I have some extra bananas. So I think I'm gonna cut one. You know how those food bloggers do that shit? They cut the banana in half and then they put it on the bread and it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna attempt to do that. And then afterwards, we're just gonna pop this baby in the oven on 350 degrees for like 45 to 60 minutes. And once it comes out, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so it has been about an hour and our bread is done baking. Depending on the size of your baking pan, it's going to take a little bit longer, a little bit less time in the oven. As you can see, our bread rose pretty dang well. We got a nice golden crispy top. And I do think the bananas add a nice touch. So if you have an extra banana, I don't know, you might wanna add it. So now is the hardest part. 
where we must wait for our bread to cool. So we don't wanna keep our bread in the pan itself because this is going to cause it to become more moist and dense. We wanna take it out onto a drying rack and have it cool that way. Um, so that's why I like to line my loaves with parchment paper too because I find it a lot easier to just lift the loaf out and then set it down and get rid of the pan. And then you kind of have to carefully maneuver it off of the parchment paper, but for the most part, it shouldn't be that difficult. That's pretty easy. So then now we need to let our bread completely cool. And I know you wanna dip into that warm banana bread, and you can if you want, if you're not making this for friends, you're just making it for yourself. There actually is a reason why you wanna let your bread cool completely. It's because the height and like the way the starches are forming in the bread are still forming as the bread is cooling because of the heat in the bread. And if you cut it, when you cut the bread, you're actually pushing down on the bread. So even if you try to be really, really careful and you're only pressing down a little bit, it's still going to compress some of that starch. So if you really want fluffy vegan banana bread, you gotta let it cool completely. So I'm going to set this off to the side, do some other things with my life, but don't worry, I will be back for a taste test. All right, our bread has cooled, has been styled, has been photographed for the blog, which means now it is time to eat it. As you can see, it came out looking nice and fluffy and I did film a close up to show you guys the detail on how the bread actually is fluffy. It's not dense in the center, it even has a nice little squish to it and it's nice and thick. And that's mostly because of the ingredients that we use, but also I would totally recommend using the eight inch loaf pan. It will make it a lot taller versus when you use it in the nine inch, it'll go a lot flatter. Um, so I got some almond milk uh, to eat with my bread but might as well film a little taste test for you guys. I'm just gonna take the butt piece because, you know. Yeah, you know what, I don't want the butt piece. It has a crusty end and I'm not about that. Let's dig in. Honestly, this stuff is so good that I like to eat it plain. It's so soft and squishy. Mm. I love it, this recipe is definitely not overly sweet, but personally, I don't really like my baked goods to be super sweet anyways. And it also leaves room if you wanna put like a sweet nut butter or something on it. Honestly, just enjoy this plain, but I also love to spread a thick dollop of nut butter on top or even some like vegan yogurt or some chia seed jam or something like that. Hey, you could even make a banana bread sandwich PB&J. Whoa, that would be crazy. It's also really good if you reheat it up and toast it or even air fry it and the edges look nice and crispy, but the soft, the center, excuse me, word farts will uh, still stay soft. But yeah. Overall, I really like it. You definitely get a little crust um, from the outside of the bread where it cooks, but the inside is still nice and soft. But personally, I do love how you have a bit of a chew from the rolled oats that we folded in there. And there is tons of banana flavor. So if you like banana bread, you guys should totally check this recipe out. Sorry, I was a little parched there. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys like this style. I have a few more videos of this style coming your way. And if you do like it, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And give me any suggestions for future recipes of this nature that you'd like me to film. I have a few basics covered, but sometimes it's harder for me because I make recipes full time. So I think some things are easier than others, whereas there may be a basic that I may not think of that you might think of, if any of that made sense. But yes, suggestions down below. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day, whatever time of day it is for you. And now I'm gonna go eat some more banana bread and you should go to your kitchen and make this so you can make some slash eat some too. Stumbling all over my words today. Hopefully the rest of these videos uh, they get more eloquent. But anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay.